Okay, so this is part two of the extended miasm model, Sankran's extended miasm model lecture. And here, um, as I've said earlier, we're going to look at those primary miasms. Okay, let me get onto the slideshow. Right, so this is starting to get in detail but starting with those primary miasms. Right, let's continue. Um, remember, as we've discussed in the previous lecture, the Sankara primarily or mainly sees these miasms as descriptions of coping styles. How different people, different characters, different natures, different remedies cope with different stresses. So we're going to look firstly at the, what we call these three primary high Hahnemann miasms first. I'm just going to move this away just to show this graphic over here. So here are three what we'll call primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And we can see from these we can make up the combination of all the colors can make up brown, red and yellow makes orange, and blue and yellow makes green. So we'll see how our miasms contribute in that way. I'll just move it back up here into the corner. So we obviously are including the acute miasm as well. So we'll be looking at four miasms. Like the primary colors, they can help us understand the in-between miasms or the mixed miasms. Because they're various mixtures of the primary miasms. We're going to get on to the acute miasm first and looking at the map of the miasms, um, it's placed to the far left, it's a starting point. And a key word is you can already see over here is panic, but let's look at that a bit more. Deeply. So that main characteristic is panic. So acute sudden response to a temporary life-threatening situation. So the options are panic, fight, flight, very instinctive responses, and this is as we'd expect. So also quite childlike, like clinging, an example would be a stramonium or sacrum album. So if we look here at the rubric of mind clinging, we find stramonium there, sacrum album, secuta, camphora, borum. So these are in many ways could be considered as quite acute remedies. And this is a short video uh, on YouTube. You perhaps look at it and you'll get an idea of what uh, the panic uh, acute miasm is like. Now the important thing with the acute miasm, it's not a chronic or a permanent miasm. It, well, its effects are not felt continuously. Once acute response, over, once the bad situation uh, is over, the person can return to their normal state until the next alarming circumstance. And again, they might have an overwhelming panic, panic attack type response. Look at a situation example. Okay, so we've seen the um, example they're shown in the, from the movie, The Panic Room, a little clip from it. Once the cause of the acute panic is over, the person returns to their normal state, as I've said, until the next alarming or major frightening challenge. And here are some selected keywords. I won't read through them all, but acute and sudden violent. And uh, if we know our plant family groups, we know that the Solanaceae as a plant family has got quite a lot of this. And uh, in the mineral kingdom, it's often the first column of the periodic table. So hydrogen, lithium, sodium, um, potassium, those type of remedies. So let's look at some of them from the mineral kingdom. We've got hydrogen and lithium. As I've said, we could have added calcium, potassium, um, we could have added the uh, natrium as well. 
plant kingdom. Um, we've got aconite, arnica, calendula, belladonna, stramonium, um, camphora. Yep. Yeah. This is just a selected group, it's not the whole lot, it's just to give you a general flavor of what remedies would fit into this, these myosins. And from the animal kingdom, we've got lysinum, also known as hydrophobinum, which is derived from the saliva of a rabbit dog. So it's got quite a lot of acute craziness, wildness, attack in it. It's a kind of a lashing out. So now we move on to the Sora station or, and the Sauric myosin as one of our primary myosins. So there's, we can see already the idea of struggle coming up. So it's actually struggle and hope. So the problem here is, is more permanent um, as opposed to the acute myosin, but it can be faced with a fair degree of hopefulness. So main keywords again here, struggle, effort, some difficulties, hope, and you also, also anxiety along the line. So as opposed to acute myosin where it's just overwhelming automatic reaction, this is more considered responses to a difficult and challenging circumstance and a feeling that one needs to struggle, but there is a possibility of coming through the other side. So mind hopeful, and I've just, there's 26 uh, remedies in this rubric. I've just edited out a couple like calc, cali carb, and sulf. Sulf is one of the main sauric myosin remedies. Situation example, if we put struggle and hope together, looking at our own political history, We've got the anti-apartheid struggle. Um, there's, for a long time, there's been segregated apartheid. It takes years of struggle, but continuous struggle. And at times people felt, oh, you know, when will it happen? How will it happen? But the struggle and the hope continued. So let's look at some selected Sauric remedies. So we've mentioned calcarb, cuprum, calicarb, sulfur. So Sankaran says quite interesting that there's no sauric remedies in the plant kingdom. They will be more likely typhoid, but we'll come to that later. In the animal kingdom, there are not many either. We just think of the primary no so serina. Now we move on to the psychosis station. So we're moving away from the hope and struggle of Sora and into psychosis, which we've covered before. And we know that there's a fixedness, fixed nature. The problem is fixed, it can't be fixed up, it's irreparable, in disease terms considered incurable, but not immediately dangerous or destructive. It's not acutely dangerous or destructive. One can live with it, but especially or often only if no one else knows about it. So it's the idea that of hiding. And shame is important here, just in the same way we understood in the Hanumanian myosins. No hope of fixing it, someone must just hide and accept it. Now, just to go back to shame, there, shame is uh, kind of a situation where it's a bit worse than guilt. Guilt is, I'm guilty because I've done something wrong. Shame is a feeling there is something wrong with me. So we can see the difference. Sorik might feel guilty about making a mistake, doing something wrong, but a psychotic person, when they make a mistake, they'll feel a deep sense of shame and they'll need to hide that mistake because they believe that mistake comes from underlying defects in their own personality, in their own character. Hiding and accepting is important. And here are some of those main keywords, guilt and shame, shame stronger here needing to avoid places where I might be shown up and having to accept my lot in life. Let's look at a situation example. So a patient has had sex abuse perpetrated upon them as a child. Now they might have mental problems. Um, they feel dirty and unworthy. And it's a type of permanent stain. Not life threatening, but it life hindering in a big way. 
and they feel sort of okay about it, provided no one else. So it must remain a shameful, a shameful secret to be hidden by all means possible. Here's an example if you look at this video on YouTube. So some of the selected keywords, hiding, accepting, and so forth. Let's look at some selected remedies uh, from the mineral. We've got silica, we've got the bromatums are quite important. The bromide salts, calibrom, calibrom, um, natsulf, a very strong psychotic remedy in the mineral kingdom. In the plants, two years, obviously the main one, but pulsatilla, you'll know quite a lot about as well. And in the animal kingdom, um, we've got lac caninum, and most of the other lacs, we'll see some of the lacs fit into other mysums, and medarinum as the primary nursoid. Now we move on to the final primary mysum, the syphilitic mysum, right on the end of this road, and the main characteristic here is destruction. So this is very bad, it is a terminal, it's uncurable, it's fatal, no hope whatsoever. All that is left is extreme desperation. If there's no hope, there's no point in responding or behaving well, so behavior can be quite desperate, negligent, destructive. You think of people in a bad emotional state, a neg very negative state, driving on the road. They might drive in a way which is homicidal. In other words, that they can kill other people on the road and they don't mind if they die in the accident. So it's homicidal and suicidal at the same time. Isolated, feels alone in the world. I cannot help myself, so no one else can help me either. If hope and redemption are impossible, one might as well take oneself down and any others with me. As I've said before, homicide and suicide feature strongly here. So we see this destruction, finish off, devastation, hopeless. The key word is the, the total end of hope. Situation example, let's look from a very problematic South African social thing, family murders. So father of a head in a household, he loses hope for various reasons. He says there's no future for him. And now because he's responsible for the family, there's no hope for them. So the only thing to do is to uh, kill all the family members of homicide and then kill himself. That's his suicide. Now there's a song, have a look at the song. There's, you'll see the words, the lyrics given there. And what I'd like you to do is listen through the song, look through the lyrics and write down those words that you think relate to the syphilitic miasm. Send them on to me. Selected remedies from the mineral kingdom. Famous ones are alumina, most of aurum and most of its salts. Mercury, most of the different salts or varieties there. And you can see it's most of the heavy metals as well, platina, plumbum, plutonium, aurum. Um, heavy responsibilities in most cases. In the plants, what we would know is berberis, echinacea, echinacea obviously from the Asteraceae family. Animals, most probably all of the snake remedies are from the mammals, lacleoninum, the milk of the lion, and syphilinum as the primary nosod. So that completes the uh, Sankran's extended miasm, and what we'll move on to next is filling in the, the other miasms, the in-between miasms, the stations along the way. But I'm going to put that into the next section. Okay, the next section I'll start preparing now.